Me, 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 me. Hey guys, it is Jenna, what is up? And welcome back to the Board Game Garden and welcome to another monthly recap, monthly overview. All of the games that we played in June, which I cannot believe that it is already July. 2022 is already halfway over. That's wild. But I have, I think, how many games do we have to talk about today? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve ish. I'm not gonna lie, June wasn't as good of a gaming month as I wanted it to. I think in my last um, overview, I said that I wanted to play even more than we played last month, but I think we did end up playing less than we played last month, which is totally okay. I never put any pressure on myself to like get more games played because the whole point of playing board games is to have fun. So never stress about, you know, having a bad month of gaming. Just play when you can and have a good time. That's always what I tell myself. So first let's get into our stats, which I wanted to chat about first. So for the month of June, the stats are, oh my goodness. <laughs> I had it as yearly and I just saw 143 plays and I'm like, I did not play that many times in June. Let me go back to monthly. So in June, we played 24 times and we played 16 different games and it's again says zero new to me, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven are new to me. Um, which is pretty good in my opinion. So those are all the stats for June, but let's get into all of the individual plays, which I'm actually going to start on May 31st because I think my last overview video, I filmed a little bit early when it wasn't exactly the end of May and we ended up playing Lost Ruins of Arnak on the last day of May. We played it on a live stream over on Twitch. We played it with the um, leaders, expedition leaders. Yeah, Expedition Leaders. We played that alongside the base game. Um, Lost Ruins of Arnak is such a fantastic game. It's one of our favorites. It has a really good combination of mechanics. You do a lot of like exploring and there's some worker placement as well as resource management, deck building. It is a lot of fun. Um, one of Francis and I's favorites. And I think this was actually the first time we played it this year or maybe the second time we played it this year but we played it on live stream it was a lot of fun um we played it with the expedition leaders expansion if you are a fan of lost runes of arnak i always recommend getting the expansion because it just adds some variable player powers it gives you some more cards it gives you another research track a double-sided research track so there's a bunch of variability um, when it comes to adding in the expansion so i definitely recommend it for anyone that already loves the base game or is interested in getting the base game the expansion just makes it even better so that was on may 31st we played lost runes of arnak on stream next up we ended up playing this three times hair in my mouth um and that is bark avenue which this is a prototype it was up on kickstarter and i did a little bit of coverage on this for the campaign and i did actually back this game before teradice games reached out for me to do content so it was really nice to be able to play this a bunch of times to really fully know that i made the right decision on backing it it is such a fun game and i'm so so excited for the Kickstarter to go out. I think it'll be finished. I think they're aiming for like September of next year. So in about a year, a little bit over a year. So um, hopefully it comes out early. It's a fantastic game where you're a dog walker in New York City and there's some route optimization, pick up and deliver. You're picking up dogs and walking them and getting them to do all their favorite things and then dropping them back off for tips. So. That is Bark Avenue. But next up, after Bark Avenue, we had a game night with our friends Joy, Caleb, and Mark. We ended up playing Tuki, which is a really, really fun dexterity game about building different shapes. I've talked about that here on the channel before. We played King Domino, which is actually their copy. We do not have King Domino, but it was a lot of fun. It's a very good intro tile placement game. I think I might have. I don't think I won that one, actually. 
I think I might have got like second or third, but it's really fun. Um, I am considering adding it to our collection. I might look into getting King Domino Origins because I've heard that that's really good. Um, and then there's also Queen Domino, which I think you can pair up with King Domino in order to make the game a little bit more challenging or just like bigger in general. I'm not 100% sure, but let me know what you guys recommend I get. If we should just get the original King Domino, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Or if Origins, King Domino Origins is better, let me know. Um, but we played that. We also played Cartographers, which I love Cartographers. This was actually one of our first roll and writes. It was this alongside Welcome to Your Perfect Home. And in Cartographers, you are a cartographer and it is a flip and write. It's actually not a roll and write where you are flipping cards and then drawing polyomino shapes in a map, which it might be a little bit hard to show you guys here, but that's the map there. And you are putting different polyomino shapes, shapes of different um, things. So there's like forests and deserts and water and all of those things. And you're getting points in different ways based off of the A, B, C, and D objectives. And you're going through seasons. So in spring, you are scoring A and B. In summer, you're scoring B and C. Fall is C and D. And then winter is D and A. So you're kind of scoring different objectives at different times throughout the game. And it is just such a good one. I believe I did win that one that night. Um, and there's also a newer version, Cartographer's Heroes, which I'm very excited to try out. But after that, we just played Paint the Roses, which I've chatted about quite a few times here on the channel. So I'm not gonna get into it too much, but it is a fantastic cooperative deduction game that is based around the theme of Alice in Wonderland. And you are the gardeners trying to complete the Queen of Hearts garden before she catches you. And it is just so, so much fun. You're placing tiles and deducing other players' information to try to guess their card. Such a good one. So that was our game night with Caleb, Joy, and Mark. And then moving on to the next day, this was actually the vlog that I put up. So if you guys wanted to go check out us actually playing all these games that I chatted about, I will put it up here. We did a game night with our friends, like I just said, on Friday night. And then we hung out with um, Francis' family on Saturday. And we ended up playing only two games, which I was a little bit sad that we only played two games. But the first one, oh, things almost fell. The first one, we played QE for the first time. This is an interesting game. I, I've i never really been a huge fan of auction or bidding games, but this one seemed a little bit different than your typical auction bidding game. In QE, you are countries bidding on um, companies, I believe, and you can bid as much as you want. It is secret bidding, so everyone secretly puts down a number, gives the auctioneer, and then whoever wins just gets that tile, but no one knows what the bids were. So you're always just like wondering like, ooh, how much do I need to bid in order to win this one if you wanna win um, specific ones pretty badly? There are certain situations where you wanna win ones more than others. So it's an interesting one, very interesting. And it was funny cause I meant to put 900,000 for one of them and I ended up putting 9 million. So that kind of screwed me over. I definitely lost because the one thing in the game is that you can't win if you are the player that spends the most money. So if you spend the most money, you're automatically disqualified from the game. So you always wanna be the person that wins the most but doesn't spend the most money, which is very difficult. And it is a very interesting game. Definitely recommend at least trying it. Um, it's, it's a good one. So that was the first game that we played with Francis' family. And then we also played Bark Avenue, like I've already chatted about and then the next day after that i had a solo solo i cannot speak english today i had a solo sunday stream and we played one of my most anticipated games for the first time and that is oh i don't want things falling stardew valley the board game i have been wanting this board game for so long. I love Stardew Valley, the video game. Um, I used to stream it all the time on Twitch and just play it all the time. I still play it here and there on my Switch, but um, Stardew Valley, the board game is such a fantastic open world kind of game where you're trying to 
you know, fulfill all these goals, kind of like in the video game where you're trying to finish some rooms in the community center, you're trying to get some of your grandpa's goals finished as well, and it is a lot of fun. There's a lot of um, luck in it, so if you're not a huge luck fan, um, I don't know if you'd like this. I have never been a huge luck fan, but I think this is a game where I'm okay with it because it makes it challenging and it makes it fun being able to just like maybe get something, maybe not. It's it's a lot of fun and I've only played it once and I really want to play it again solo. I also have not played it with other people. I've only played it solo. So really excited to hopefully get this to the table with more than just me. We will see. Francis is not interested in playing this one, but maybe I might be able to get him to play it if he if he loves me enough. <laughs> the next day that we played was that following Tuesday. We ended up playing Bark Avenue yet again. So that is that. And then we played on Thursday another Board Game Tables game, which QE is from Board Game Tables. And we ended up grabbing Kabuto Sumo as well, which is such a fun dexterity game. We don't have a ton of dexterity games and I really wanna add some more to the collection. This is a game where you have this little table and you're using these chips to push into the table in order for other things to fall off of it. And you're trying to ultimately push your opponent's beetle, they're like sumo wrestler beetles, off of the ring. So you're pushing things on in hopes that their beetle will fall off. There's different objectives, different special abilities for beetles. You can choose like a variable player power and it is so much fun. I really, really enjoy this one. Um, I will say that it kind of can drag a little bit long at two players. We played it with four players a little bit later, which I'll chat about, but two players can drag on for pretty long. Uh, and I find myself just like wanting to, you know, end it <laughs> if it takes too long. So, but overall, I really enjoy it. Um, it's a very like chill game. You can kind of just like put it on your coffee table and play it while you watch a TV show or something. It's, it's very fun and it really like gets you like up off your chair, I guess, and like walking around and like trying to get from like different angles and it, it's, a, it's a fun one. So. That is Kabuto Sumo. Next up, we had a board game night or a board game sleepover actually with our friends Tom and Asha. We started off with Kabuto Sumo, like I just chatted about. Such a fun game at four players. You have to go on to two teams of two, so you're kind of working together in that aspect. It was a lot of fun. We also played um, Paint the Roses, which was a lot of fun. And then we played Merchants of the Dark Road, which is just down here. I just recently, it's the last video before this one, uploaded a Merchants of the Dark Road review. I will put it up here so you guys can go check it out. It was our first time playing four player and I think I enjoy Merchants of the Dark Road most at four players. We haven't played it with three. We typically don't play games at three players. I feel like it's very difficult to, cause like it's usually Francis and I, and then like, usually we're playing with another couple so it's a little bit difficult for us to find three players or play three player games but we've really enjoyed Merchants of the Dark Road at four. And then lastly in the morning, the next morning, we played Rome by Red Raven Games. It's one of the, I actually think it is the smallest Ryan Lockett game and basically you have characters in front of you and a map that is six different cards and you are placing your chips in different configurations like polyomino configurations based off of the characters that you have um, and you're trying to it's an area area majority game which i'm very surprised that i actually like rome because typically i don't love area control area majority but i think this one's just so light and beautiful that i'm okay with it um, I've chatted about this game before, so I don't want to chat too long about it, but if you do get the most chips on a card, you get that card and that card flips over and is another character that you can then use to play more shapes on the board. And then whoever gets 10 cards ends the game. We all add up the amount that you have on your cards and whoever has the most at the end wins. It is a, such a good game. It's definitely one of my I was gonna say favorite Ryan Lockett games, but I literally have only played two. So um, it is one of my favorites. One out of the two that I have, uh, but it's a good one. Really, really enjoy that one. Um, that is everything that we played on the game night with Tom and Asha. Next up, Francis and I played Honey Buzz for the first time. Um, this is by Elf Creek Games. I 
love this game so much. I'm so excited to try it out solo. I haven't yet to do that. But Honey Buzz is a worker placement tile placing game where you are worker bees and you're creating your hive and doing different actions based off of different hexes that you complete. It is such a fantastic game. It is beautiful. Um, I don't think Francis liked it as much as I did. I really enjoyed it. I'm excited to try it out solo. Um, I think maybe it was just because it was our first time playing. We kind of didn't know exactly what we were doing. It was on a live stream, so we probably looked like idiots not knowing what we were doing, but it kind of taught us to not play games for the first time on live stream. We should always try to play a game first before we play it on live stream, but it was a really fun one. And then we ended up playing Kabuto Sumo after that as well. Clearly we really liked Kabuto Sumo in that like week and a half because we played it so many times. I'm pretty sure we played it more than that too. I might have uh, forgot to put it down, but next up I played on Solo Sunday a game that I absolutely love and I'm so happy that I started playing it solo because it is so much fun solo. That is Parks. Parks is a game where you are walking on trails, collecting resources, and then visiting parks with those resources. It is so good. And in the solo game, you're playing against an AI um, hiker and they're just like blocking places, taking cards. Overall one that I definitely think I will be playing solo more because I really enjoyed it. There's also another like fan made solo variant. I think it's called Ranger Ron, correct me if I'm wrong. And a lot of people have said that that solo variant is even better than the one that comes in the base game. So yes, also there's two expansions for parks that I wanna get as well, so such a good one and I'm very happy like I said that I played it solo because now I know how to play it and I can just take it out whenever I want and easily get it to the table without having to learn it so that is Parks. I played that on a solo Sunday. Oh, okay we have four more to go. So the following Tuesday after that solo Sunday we played Terraforming Mars Aries Expedition on live stream, and I think I've chatted about this in a past monthly overview, but I think it was one over on the Jen Rose channel, so I did want to chat about it a little bit here, but Terraforming Mars Aries Expedition I think is like an easier, quicker version of the original Terraforming Mars, and I really enjoyed this. Um, I said in this last video that I chatted about this that it was quite a big surprise for us. We didn't think we'd like it as much as we do, but the like action or phase selection kind of thing is really, really fun. It's also a great engine building game and like a, I guess you could classify it as like tableau building, um, but it's just really cool seeing like all of your cards working together and all of that. So we really enjoy Terraform Mars Ares Expedition. Um, if you guys want to hear more about that, um, I would be willing to do a, a full review on that. I think that would be a lot of fun, so let me know. But that was what we played on Tuesday, and then on Sunday of that week, we ended up playing a new game to us. I don't think I've showed this on the channel yet, but we played Brass Birmingham for the first time, and holy crap, this game is great. Now I know why this is. I'm pretty sure it's like number three on BGG. There is a lot going on in this game. Holy poop. Um, I also do want to say that Roxley did send us this. So huge shout out to them. Thank you so much for letting us try this one out. I am really excited to talk about this one more. Um, it was definitely one that I saw the cover and I was like, I don't know if that's like something I would be interested in because I'm a huge fan of theme and art. But Honestly, the theme and the art is, in this is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, this game was very overwhelming for our first game. Um, I did not really know what was going on the first like half of it, um, but it was a lot of fun still. There was a lot to think about. It was definitely the most like involved <laughs> I've had to be in a game in a very, excuse me, long time. So super excited to play this more. Um, and then chat about it here on the channel. But that is Brass Birmingham, a crazy game. It's it's kind of like a 
ticket to ride, but very, very thinky with like a lot of resource production and playing cards in order to place things on a map. Holy manoli, it is quite the game. So we played that one. And then we also just recently, I think this was our last um, Tuesday live stream, but we played one of our favorites. This is a big boy. That's very, very large and in charge, but that is Scythe. Oh my goodness. Scythe from Stonemaier Games is one of Francis and I's favorites. We actually enjoy this a lot at two players and we hadn't played this since, I don't even know, maybe October or November of last year, which is crazy. Um, we definitely want to get this to the table more because we had a lot of fun with it. It is so much fun. I will say though, I don't win Scythe very often, but I still enjoy the process of playing. Um, it's a fun one where you have your faction, I guess, and there is a board. There's a little bit of area majority, area control. There's a little bit of combat, but this is a game where I'm okay with it because in Scythe, you are trying to get stars on different accomplishments, and um, I think it's six stars. Whoever gets six stars on six different accomplishments, so that is maybe getting all of your workers out on the board, all of your mechs out on the board, building the four buildings. There's just a bunch of different goals, and whoever gets six first ends the game, and then you get points based off of um, all of the areas that you control, all the hexes that you control. Um, I think it's like points for every two resources as well as the stars that you have. So you're just really going for these goals. Um, I haven't really talked about Scythe too much on this channel and I kind of want to do more coverage on Scythe because we absolutely love it and I would love to chat about it more but there's a great like action system. Um, kind of reminds me of Villainous where you have your pawn and you're you have four different places that you can go, but you can never do one thing twice. You always have to move it to a different one. Um, I really enjoy that action mechanism. Um, there is a faction that you can do like the same action twice in a row, but I really, really enjoy Scythe. Um, and the art is absolutely beautiful. I don't really know where to put this, but let's go to our last game here, shall we? which is a solo only game, which I don't have any other solo only games, but this is Coffee Roaster. I played this the other night and I am so, so happy. I ended up getting this from the Facebook marketplace and I'm so happy I did. This is such a chill, fun game. It's very luck heavy because it is a bag builder. Um, so you're pulling out chips from a bag in order to roast coffee and trying to roast the perfect cup at the end of the game. It was so much fun. It was so relaxing. I just like sat on the couch on, I think it was like Friday night. Was it Thursday or Friday night? One of those two nights. And I put on some like coffee shop lo-fi and Oh, it was just so good. I, I love this game. I'm super excited. I think I might play this tomorrow on my solo Sunday stream. So if you guys want to come check that out, um, I might do a roasting challenge where you do three in a row um, and then you compile your score. But Coffee Roaster from Stronghold Games, definitely recommend if you're a solo gamer. It is so much fun. It is just so chill. And I feel like there's so much um, strategy in this one because you have two different phases and you can do the first phase not as many times as you'd like but quite a few times before you go into the second phase which is actually brewing your cup of coffee so in the first phase you're building your bag and really making what's in your bag what will get you the most points in the coffee phase so there's a lot of strategy when it comes to um, getting the chips that you want in your bag so that when you go to the next one you're pulling out the right ones to make your perfect cup. So yes, that is Coffee Roaster. And then quickly, I did want to chat about a few games that I played on BGA, which I typically don't chat about BGA games here because I do personally prefer playing games on the table instead of on my iPad or on my cell phone. But I did play a few games this month that I really enjoyed, which one is one that I constantly play, and that is just the original Azul. I love that game. I don't know if I ever want to get it like in physical form. 
Maybe I might have to um, grab the chocolate Azul. I think there's like one that just recently came out that looks like chocolate, uh, which is really cool. And I'm just obsessed with chocolate, so it'd be very fitting. But yes, Zool on BJ is really, really fun. And then I also just recently played Isle of Cats on BGA. I played it solo, which was really enjoyable. I liked that and I feel like it would be a really good game to actually get physically. So I kind of want to grab Isle of Cats sometime soon. Maybe when we go to my friendly local game store soon, maybe we'll pick up that. It was really, really fun and I appreciate that it has a solo variant so I can do that. And speaking of solo variants, before we get into my top three plays of the month, I did want to mention that in July, I really want to try to get a bunch of games played solo in July. That's going to be like my, my July challenge is going to be to play as many games solo as I can because we have so many games in this collection that can be played solo that I have not realized I can play solo. On top of that, I've discovered that there are fan-made solo variants on BGGs, so I'm going to look into that to see if there's any games here. Um, I've heard that there's a good one for Fun Fair, which I want to play. I've heard that there's a good one for Santa Monica that I want to play as well. So I'm very excited to just dive into more solo plays in July. So when we do the July overview, I will kind of chat about how I did with that. I'm hoping I do a solo Sunday every Sunday. So that's going to be already four Sundays there that I play solo games, but I want to try to maybe get one or two additional per week. So hopefully, and I want them all to be different solo games. So hopefully at the end of July, I will be able to say that I played, if I do two, so let's say hopefully I will get eight to 12 solo games played. Hopefully closer to 12. That is my ultimate goal, is to be able to play three games per week solo. Fingers crossed she can do it. Keep me accountable, guys. Maybe I'll let you guys know like how it's going over on the Discord, which if you do not know, we have a Discord. A bunch of new people um, started or like came over there and joined, so I appreciate that. Uh, it's been fun and a lot more people are like chatting, which makes you really happy. So if you're not already part of the Discord, I would love to have you over there at the Game Garden. We also chat a little bit about video games as well, Animal Crossing, Stardew Valley, all of those things, Fall Guys. Um, we used to do a lot of Among Us, which do we all remember that part of uh, the pandemic? <laughs> that was a phase. But let's get into the top three games or top three plays of the month. Which ones really, really stuck out to me? I think one is going to be my first solo play of Stardew Valley, the board game. Played that for the first time solo on a solo Sunday stream. It was so much fun and I just, I wanna play it again. That will probably be a game that I play a few times in July, hopefully solo. And then I think number two, might have to be Brass Birmingham. Again, probably like the biggest surprise of the month. I didn't think I was going to enjoy it as much as I did, but it was really fun. Both Francis and I really enjoyed that one. So Stardew Valley, the board game, Brass Birmingham, two very different games. And then I think, oof, it, I think it might be a tie between Scythe or Coffee Roaster. Scythe has always been like one of our favorites and it was really nice to get that on the table again after like a very long time, like five or six months. Um, so that was really fun. But then also Coffee Roaster, my first solo experience of that was, was really nice. I think I'm gonna have to say Coffee Roaster. It was really fun. And I, I just, I'm getting really into solo gaming and it's just like so therapeutic to me. So those are my top three, Stardew Valley the board game, Brass Birmingham, and Coffee Roaster. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know all the games that you guys played down below. Maybe just let me know your top plays of the month. I would love to know that and chat with you guys down in the comments. It's always one of my favorite things. Um, I'm really excited for this next month with the solo challenge and we have a few new games that I wanna try out and get to the table. So very excited for July. Hopefully we can get some games played. It's going to be really nice outside. So typically in the summer, we end up going outside more and not getting to the table as much, but we will see how many times we can 
sit down here and play. Also, our friends Tom and Asha are busy pretty much all of July, so we're not going to be able to have any board game nights. Maybe we'll have a board game night with um, Joy and Caleb and Mark again, hopefully. Maybe some more game nights with Francis' parents, maybe my parents. And I'm also, ooh, I'm also going to Breakout Con. We're going to Breakout Con on the 16th of July. We're just going for Saturday, but I'm hoping to get some games played that day as well. And I'll bring you guys along for that. So maybe that will get some games played. But anyways, I'm gonna stop yapping. This game, not this game, this video has been all over the place. Um, I apologize. Hopefully once I can get this edited, um, it'll be a little bit more put together. But clearly today was not my day when it come to uh, when it came to speaking English and making videos. So hopefully that's okay with you guys. I love you so much. Remember, you are somebody's reason to smile. And I will see you in my next video. <laughs> Bye friends. <laughs>